Alrighty, so we're going to look at the muscles of the lower leg. And so first muscle we're going to look at is gastrocnemius. This muscle has two heads and likes to do plantar flexion. So we've positioned the patient in just a little bit of knee flexion, but I'm going to go ahead and resist plantar flexion. So go ahead and push your foot into my hand. Here we can see the medial head, and here is the lateral head, and then the tendon is coming down toward the calcaneus on the back side. Underneath gastroc is soleus, and so we want to reduce the impact of gastroc by putting her in a little bit more knee flexion, so that minimizes gastroc's influence. And because this muscle sits underneath, we're going to go on either side of the tendon and trace it up to just below the head of the gastroc and feel in this area. Soleus also likes to do plantar flexion, so the resistance will be the same as it was with gastroc, but now just on either side of that tendon and relax. One more time, can you pull? There we go. So soleus will be coming down and also flowing in attachment-wise into the Achilles, but muscle belly will sit underneath the gastroc muscle in this area. Next on our list are the muscles that wrap around the medial malleolus. So we'll have our patient flip over. And so to find these muscles, we're going to be looking at posterior tib, uh, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. And so what we want to find is posterior tib first. He's going to be first in this group and probably the most prominent, easy to find. So we're going to ask the patient to push their foot down and bring it into inversion. So push down and in for me. And there she has a very prominent posterior tib, nice and easy to see. So once we find posterior tib, then we're in position to find the other two. So sometimes we'll nickname posterior tib Tom. And then the next muscle we'll nickname Dick for extensor digitorum longus. So we're going to move just posterior to the posterior tib. And now I'm going to ask the patient to try to push down with her toes, her lesser toes, not her big toe. Maybe she can even flick them for me a little bit. And relax one more time. And so there is the tendon for extensor digitorum longus. The last muscle in this group we nickname Harry. And Harry stands for extensor, so I'm sorry, flexor hallucis longus. And so for flexor hallucis longus, I'm going to go more uh, posterior and actually try to find that little divot between the um, Achilles tendon. This muscle is coming from the fibula and his tendon is crossing over behind the posterior aspect of the ankle and then making its way down here to the bottom of the toe. So we're going to feel right here in this area and then go ahead and push that big toe down and relax. I'm going to actually kind of push in just a little bit to feel that tendon as it wraps itself around the posterior aspect. Relax for one more time, and there we go, push. And so that's where we'll find Harry or flexor hallucis longus. So posterior tib, extens or flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. Okay, next muscle is the superficial muscles on the lateral aspect of the leg. So we need to position our patient in sideline. Pillow there. And so we're going to look for peroneus longus first. Peroneus longus coming from the head of the fibula and then the proximal two-thirds of the lateral shaft of the fibula. And this muscle likes to do eversion and plantar flexion. So I'm going to ask her to um, lift her foot up toward the ceiling. She can plantar flex a little bit, but the eversion should be enough. So up toward the ceiling for me. And there we can see peroneus longus right there. As we trace that muscle down, push a little harder for me, there is the tendon for peroneus longus. And so that actually sets us up to find peroneus brevis because peroneus brevis will be on the distal two-thirds of the lateral shaft of the fibula. 
So find that tendon and go on either side. Go ahead and relax for me. And then push up toward the ceiling one more time. And there is her peroneus brevis. So peroneus longus proximal and the tendon. Peroneus brevis is distal. Go ahead and push. And so as long as we're on either side of that tendon, you know that you're on the brevis muscle. Next muscle in this group is anterior tip. So we'll have the patient um, back into supine positioning. You're fine. Okay. Anterior tib, strong dorsiflexion on the anterior aspect of the foot. So I'm going to ask her to pull her foot up. And there we can see the tendon for anterior tib, very prominent tendon on the anterior surface of the ankle. The muscle belly is going to be attaching onto the tibia. Go ahead and relax for me and pull up for me one more time. And there we can see the anterior tib um, muscle belly in that area. Okay, and then we want to look at extensor hallucis longus. So this tendon we'll see across the dorsal aspect of the foot. Go ahead and pull that big toe up. There's extensor hallucis longus. The muscle for this is going to dive deep pretty close to the bottom of the ankle. We won't be able to feel muscle belly here. Go ahead and pull it for me one more time. We can trace it up to right about here and after that it's going to go down into the um, lower part of the anterior leg. So we can't really feel it after that point. Extensor digitorum longus then is going to be the muscle that's going to extend the four lesser toes. Go ahead and flick those for me. Pull up. There we go. So we can see extensor digitorum longus coming across here. And the muscle belly for this will be um, lateral to anterior tib. So anterior tib and then when we move lateral we'll come to the muscle belly for extensor digitorum longus. Peroneus longus is still out here, so when we look at these three muscles, we'll see anterior tib, extensor digitorum, and then peroneus longus, most, uh, most on the lateral. Go ahead and pull those toes up for me one more time. And so there is the muscle belly for extensor digitorum longus. Alrighty. Last on this list is peroneus tertius. He can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to find. He likes to dorsiflex the ankle and does a little bit of eversion at the same time. He's actually attaching onto the distal aspect of the anterior portion of the fibula, and then he's going to come down and attach onto the um, dorsal base of the fifth metatarsal. So we'll ask her to do dorsiflexion and a little bit of eversion. Go up and out for me. And relax one more time. And so here we are in the area of peroneus tertius. And relax one more time. Oh, there we go. 